Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of the Sports Hub here on SBTV. I'm Michael Wenjin and here today are my familiar analysts Alex Strope and Jackson Jurek. Guys, are you ready for another week here? Of course, it's a, another week, another dollar, whatever they say. That's kind of what they say, right JJ? Yeah, I think it's like another day, another dollar. Okay, something another week, like another that. five dollars. Sure. Okay, yeah. awesome. Can't yeah. wait. Yeah, we're ready to, we're ready to keep going. Yeah, exactly. Uh, we, we got a lot of st stuff to talk about on today's show as we'll recap Super Bowl 54, discuss the Badgers men's basketball program, the EWSP men's hockey second half of the schedule, and much more here on the Sports Hub. The sports world was tuned in last night to Super Bowl 54 in Miami between the Kansas City Chiefs and the San Francisco 49ers. In the first half, both teams put together a couple of good scoring drives, and the score would end up being tied at 10 going into halftime. The 49ers would go back into the driver's seat, scoring 10 points and intercepting Patrick Mahomes twice in the third quarter to lead 20 to 10. The Chiefs would not let up in the fourth quarter, and they would end up scoring two touchdowns in six minutes to go ahead for good and win Super Bowl 54, 31 to 20. Patrick Mahomes was named MVP, throwing for 286 yards, two touchdowns, and scoring one of his own. Guys, uh, it was a pretty exciting game to watch last night. Uh, what are your reactions to the game last night? It's, it's almost poetic, right, that Kansas City did what they've done all postseason. And that's come from behind in a game where it seems like they're kind of out of it. And then all of a sudden, boom, Patrick Mahomes is going to lead his team to, uh, I mean, it was actually a big win, an 11-point win, uh, when they were down 10. Um, so it's, it's, it's amazing to see what this team was capable of fighting back from uh, being down pretty much a lot of this postseason, the three games they played. So it, it, was, uh, it, it was Patrick Mahomes doing Patrick Mahomes. I know I say that a lot, but I, it's, it's hard to put words on how special he is. Um, we knew if he was going to hoist the Lombardi, it's his league now, right? He was taking the throne, the youngest guy to ever win both a Super Bowl ring and an MVP at only 24 years old. Um, we've got a lot of time left to see what Patrick – Mahomes can do in an Andy Reid system. Obviously, uh, this is just the beginning, at least is the way I view it. San Francisco, however, they're not done either. They've got a very sustainable uh, system implemented right now under Kyle Shanahan, and I think they're going to be a dog in the NFC for a couple more years at least. Uh, so these two teams were the teams that deserved to be here. Um, it was fresh blood. It was two teams that really had a rise the last few years. And uh, it was a really good football game, an entertaining football game throughout, and that's all we can ask for. Yeah, I think you hit it there. Patrick Mahomes doing Patrick Mahomes-like things. They were down 21 to zero, 17 to seven, and 20 to 10, with 10 minutes left in the fourth quarter. Then, as Michael said, in six minutes they scored 11 points, 21 unanswered, and won 31 to 20. They did what they did in the playoffs. They were down, came back, won the game. It was almost like they had them right where they wanted them the entire game, let them get comfortable. You know, Mahomes struggled there, as we saw in the third quarter. He struggled to find his guys. The second interception, debatable on whether it was his fault or not, Tyreek Hill. But throw was behind him, could have been caught. But leading his team, <clears throat> coming back, winning the Super Bowl, now, I don't know if he deserves the MVP. Damian Williams had a great game. I want to say 140-ish scrimmage yards, two touchdowns. Very good game for him. I think he should have gotten the MVP, but normally the quarterback is the guy who does get it, gets all the attention, says he deserves it. And I think he did, but Damian Williams had a great game. The Chiefs deserved it, in my opinion. And Andy Reid, congrats, guy. You... you no other coach in the league deserved it more than him. Um, I think the quote he said, I didn't sleep with the trophy. I slept with my trophy wife and listened to Pitbull. And I was like, you know what? Bonus points. Bonus points. Good for you because he deserves it. And I know he's going to be excited about that White House buffet. No doubt about it. Yeah, the fast food buffet that Clemson got to experience a few years ago. But, no, looking at Andy Reid, I mean, he's always been in the conversation as one of the, if not the best coach of all time. Probably not the, obviously, with Belichick and Lombardi in the conversation. But he's got to be, what, maybe top five, top ten for sure. And this just obviously makes even more of a case. He was already a Hall of Famer, but this, this uh, makes it concrete. Um, so, yes, very good for him. 
We've seen what Patrick Mahomes was able to do in this system. Donovan McNabb was similar uh, in the 2000s under Andy Reid. And uh, his roots tie back to Green Bay as well. Uh, Reed was an assistant under Mike Holmgren back in the 90s, uh, coaching Brett Favre on the offensive side of the ball. So uh, you got to be happy for him. Another guy I'm very happy for, Terrell Suggs, uh, won his second ring. And both of them have been against San Francisco. He won that first ring uh, back in 2000, what was that, 13, uh, with Baltimore. So good for those guys, veterans. Yeah, um, 222nd win for Andy Reid. So I think, like you said, solidifies his spot in the Football Hall of Fame. Um, as a coach right there behind Lombardi and Belichick. Doesn't get enough credit, in my opinion, for being the coach that he is. I know he took a lot of heat for really struggling and not being able to seal the deal, but he finally did it. Um, the joy I think we saw from the Chiefs, just the raw emotion we saw last night after they won, um, I think it really shows the effort that team went through, the emotion, the up and down season. I know Mahomes was injured. It looked like the Chiefs weren't even going to make the playoffs at one point this yep. year when they played the Packers. It was like, boy, this team, they need Mahomes to survive. And he came back and led his team to that Super Bowl win. Um, good for them, the team that fought until the very end all year long, and they deserved it. Yeah, and you bring that up, and this is a conversation that's come up, especially in the playoffs, talking about the Chiefs receiving core, right? You know Travis Kelsey, he had about a half of a hundo in the Super Bowl on Sunday, but Tyreek Hill, nine catches, 105 yards. Sammy Watkins, who beat Darrell, or excuse me, Richard Sermon, uh, five catches, 98 yards in the Super Bowl. Uh, you mentioned Damian Williams, although he's a running back, can still find his spot out of the backfield. This might be one of the best receiving cores we've seen, at least win a title over the last, I don't know, decade, decade and a half. This offense has been so explosive for the last, not only this year, but obviously last year as well. Um, so this receiving core, assuming they stay intact and with Mahomes at the helm, this is a scary, scary team in the NFL. They are scary, and Mahomes is young, a young receiving core. No one's really old. Kelsey seems to be the oldest guy there on that team, and he's not even that old. Like, he still has got five years, I'd say, left to play at top tight end level in the NFL. They stay together. We could see, you know, the next dynasty forming here, and I think we are with Reed and Mahomes and that young core of the Chiefs with Hill um, and Williams. It'll be interesting to see these next 10 years, which is a long time, but how good they get. Yeah, they, they were just a step away last year. Uh, they didn't have the defense they had this year, right? They had pieces like Frank Clark and Tyran Matthew and Terrell Suggs, the veteran leadership defensively. If they could continue to piece together defenses, we're going to see what the Packers' potential was with great offenses, poor defenses. Now the Chiefs have something rolling here. It's going to be interesting to see if they keep it rolling because you can't really hate Mahomes or Reed. So uh, it, it is good to see them uh, win Super Bowl 54. Yeah, it was a good game. Very good game. Uh, you guys talked a lot about the Chiefs' uh, lethal weapons and what they have on both sides of the ball. But uh, answer me this here. Uh, can you see the Chiefs going back to more Super Bowls here in the next couple of years in the future? Jackson used the word dynasty to describe it. I think that's a fair term. Maybe not yet, but it, they are getting to that level, it seems. They've been the powerhouse in the AFC. Uh, even before Mahomes, they were still in it with Alex Smith. So if they, yeah, if they can keep it rolling, I, I, I don't see how they can't with Patrick Mahomes. Like I said at the top, this is his league now. It's, it's very puzzling to me that anybody thinks the Chiefs aren't the force in the AFC for the 2020s, at least that, the, the next five years. Um, so the, my answer is yes, I do see them going back to more Super Bowls. I, I mean, they've got to be the favorite to repeat next year, but I know it's still obviously very early. Way too early predictions, of course. Yeah. But I honestly, this is going to be the next 10 years where we saw in the last 10 years, it was either... Brady, Manning, Roethlisberger, and that was pretty much all you saw. You saw Flacco in there once, right? Flacco, yeah. Flacco and uh, some other person I forgot that led him there in the AFC. I think it's going to be Mahomes, Jackson, and Watson in the AFC. And I really think that those three are going to be like the previous three. Those three teams are going to be it. If it's not Mahomes, it could be Jackson, it could be Watson. We saw great games this last year. I seriously think that... The Chiefs had the best team, but there's still other teams out there like the Ravens, like the Texans that have capabilities of upsetting them, or not upsetting, but dethroning them in the yeah. AFC title game if they make it that far, if it ever comes to that point. 
but those are two other teams that I see and no other ones other than that. Yeah, nothing pops to mind after you, after you mention that. I think that's a good point. I think those would be the three names that I would also throw in there, at least from the quarterback level in the AFC. Uh, obviously, Brady, we don't know where he's going to be next year, uh, but that's a conversation for another day. And obviously, he's on his way out. Rivers also don't know where he's going to be, but he's on his way out. Um, I would agree 100%. I think those are the three teams you really have to look at uh, following this year as the powerhouses in the American Football Conference. Well, we know Brady's not leaving based on his commercial last night. Yes. So. He's not retiring. <laughs> that, he's not that, retiring, but we don't know where he's going. And I, I think he was offered a $30 million contract and, from Robert Kraft. Yeah, and you know we'll talk about Brady later on here eventually as we get close to the free agency. But uh, this is, in the meantime, the Chiefs' second Super Bowl win in their franchise history and Andy Reid's first as an NFL head coach. We'll take our first commercial break here on the Sports Hub, and when we return, we'll discuss the Badgers and Pointers men's basketball teams. I just wanted to get good grades and to do well. But it also made me realize that I have a lot of career goals. You're there to get a full college experience, not only participate in your sport, but participate in things outside of that. And it's all about growing as a person. My coaches have helped me with figuring out who I really am. Their lives are dedicated for us to succeed. We're back here on the Sports Hub on SBTV. The Wisconsin Badgers men's basketball program has been experiencing a tough break at this point in the season as guard Kobe King announced last week that he would no longer be a part of the program for the rest of the season. Along with King's departure, junior forward Brad Davison was suspended for one game by the Big Ten for his misconduct against Iowa. Despite the rough look for the program, the team got a huge win against Michigan State on Saturday, beating the Spartans 64-63 to at the Kohl Center. Uh, what's going on with the current culture here in Madison right now? Uh, before I touch on King, I, I want to touch on Davison and that win on Saturday. I think obviously there's a fire burning in Madison. Uh, and I think King might have had a, a partial uh, role in lighting it. Uh, looking at what they did on Saturday, huge win. It wasn't as close as the score indicates. They hit a big three at the buzzers, the Spartans did, um, to make it a one-point game. So, I mean, it really was a two-possession game. Uh, throughout most of the end of that uh, second half. Uh, this team is capable of doing big things. They have some of the pieces. Kobe King was one of them. He was the second leading scorer on this team when he uh, announced mm -hmm. his departure last Wednesday. He was the second in minutes before he announced his departure uh, last Wednesday. So obviously he played a big role. Something is, is in the water that he wasn't happy about, uh, if you will. It's okay. Uh, they Sometimes you grow up a fan, and, and uh, King being a kid from lacrosse, being a Wisconsin guy, you grow up a fan of the Badgers, you want to play for the Badgers. He got three years, and clearly it's not for him. All of his teammates are respecting his decision, not former teammates, if you will. And uh, another big note, Johnny and Jordan Davis, twin brothers from lacrosse, same high school that Kobe King went to, they are still 100% in on the Badgers, both 2020 commits. Uh, to Greg, War Greg Gard's squad. So it's not super concerning to me. I, I, I don't think very many people have bad things to say about Kobe King. He made a decision for himself. We'll see where that takes him. Uh, and he's going to be a, a guy to keep an eye on over the course of the next two, two and a half years. So uh, I think he goes power five and we'll see what happens. I don't think there's a culture that needs to be fixed in Madison by any means. Um, obviously, Greg Gard's head has been called for. Um, multiple times. I'm not agreeing with that call. Uh, I think you give this time because this is a tournament team as it stands right now. They have a lot of big wins. They've shown they can show up in big opportunities and capitalize on those. So I'm not too concerned. I think the Badgers are still in a, in a mighty fine spot. I think on Saturday we saw a big first half. They scored 43 of their 64 points. Honestly, they almost lost that game. We saw, as you mentioned, the light, late three-pointer that made it a one-point game. They held off, played great, you know, 
trying to stay true to their own form, like you said. They're a good basketball team. They're a team that can make the tournament if they just play their style of basketball, which we saw you know, in that Michigan State game. And I think that's the reason they came away with the win. Big first half, you know, made it a close game, Michigan State did, but Wisconsin held their own, made sure that they weren't going to give away a big win that they needed to get, especially in conference play against Michigan State, a team that was ranked, they probably still will be ranked, but 16th nonetheless. So big win for Wisconsin. As for that, you know, the Davis twins going to be coming in. It should be an interesting year next year for the Badgers. You don't really know what you're going to get yeah, because yeah. It's kind of a toss-up. Do do more guys leave? Do some guys just quit and don't leave to go somewhere else? Like, we'll see King do maybe. Alex said he's going to go to a power five. We don't really know where he's going to go. Um, it'll be interesting to see where the Badgers are next year, especially after this year, if they can make the tournament. Who knows? We all know there's a Cinderella story. The Badgers have made it that far before. But next year should be interesting. And the rest of this year, they have the – opportunity and possibility of making it deep into the NCAA tournament. They just need to play their style of basketball like they did on Saturday, and they shouldn't have any problem with that. But who knows? It's going to be March here soon, and March is the craziest month of the year for basketball. Yeah, and there's still plenty of conference games yet on the schedule for the Badgers that still uh, have some kind of implications whether or not this team will get a around a five seed or somewhere around that for the Big Ten tournament and of course you know each game is going to be of the utmost importance when coming down to selection Sunday in March so you know it, it's it's a question of like whether or not um, you know something like this would have like the opposite effect you would think maybe uh, some kind of rift in the program might cause a little bit of tension maybe cause some guys to not perform as well but it did the opposite effect they got a big win against a team like Michigan State number one team in the Big Ten and uh, one of the better teams around the middle of the pack and the country so uh, it, it some of the dynamics of what's happened have been good and not been so good so it, it's gonna be interesting to see how the rest of the season goes down for Wisconsin absolutely well the batters are currently 13 and 9 overall and 6 and 5 in the Big Ten their next matchup will be a border battle with the Gophers on Wednesday night in Minneapolis going from division 1 to division 3 the UWSP men's basketball team is fighting for a top spot in the WIAC as they stand tied for third in the conference with the pointers halfway through this conference schedule of the regular season, only one game separates them from Platteville and Oshkosh, who are tied for first in the WIAC. Guys, what can the pointers do to get a top spot leading up to the WIAC tournament here in the, uh, as we get closer and closer to the end of February? Yeah, yeah. it's a uh, win. Yeah, win, right. It's as simple <laughs> as that. That's the obvious answer. It's, it, it's, uh, it's as simple as that. You, you nailed it, JJ. Um, no, seriously, uh, Bob Semling knows how to do that, too. He's, he's been around for quite some time. Uh, one of the uh, longest tenured coaches in all of Division Three, and he's won a couple natties to go along with it. So the guy knows what he's doing, and he knows what he's doing very well. He, he knows how to battle test these guys. Uh, I talked to Blake Erke last week, the leading scorer for the Pointers, and he put it as simple as this. It's been a weird year in the WIAC. We're beating up on each other. That's exactly what they're doing. Uh, we saw them get a big win last Wednesday at home against UW River Falls, where it was back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, and they just needed a big shot, and they got it in the last 35 seconds from Garrett Nelson. Uh, your upperclassmen are stepping up. You've got some underclassmen stepping up. You lost seven guys from last year's team, and you're still in the middle, it, it, more toward the top, in fact, uh, only one game behind first place in the WIAC. That's how you know there's a good, to use the word again, culture uh, in uh, at Bennett Court. So I, I'm not too concerned about them. I mean, even if they don't get a top seed in the WIAC tournament, they're a team that everyone's going to look out for and is not going to want to play in the WIAC mm -hmm. tournament because they're capable, they've been there, and they've done that. Uh, these seniors and juniors were part of that Sweet 16 team a few years back. So they know what they're doing. It's exciting. Um, and you know I love college basketball. You know I love this time of year. They're going to go back and forth. They're going to have a really good win and probably a bad loss in the next month because that's what happens in February and March. So... Again, I'm not too concerned. I know nobody wants to see these pointers when it becomes March. Um, they just need to get there. And all they got to do is do that one three-letter word that Jackson said. Win. <laughs> um, two big games, though. Um, Whitewater, Eau Claire, two very winnable games, yep. I would imagine, for the pointers. And they just need to, like you said, have their leaders lead their team, continue that culture that's in that locker room that they have. They've had this year. They had last year. They can do that. 
win, win, win. They have the opportunity to do it just like the Badgers do. The Pointers can do the same thing. You know, one game out from the top spot, it's that tight. You know, the first three teams, if they can just win these two games, makes things a lot easier on themselves where they control their own destiny about who they're going to play, where they're going to play. We know it's very hard to win here in Stevens Point against these Pointers because they are unbelievable at home. Yeah. Very, you know, rare losses do we see here. And I think that's a very good thing for the Pointers, especially if they can get one of those top four seeds, get a home game. Maybe there's an upset where we get to have a second round home game. That would be very big for the Pointers. And they, they control their own destiny if they just win. And I think they have that chance to do here. Yeah, the postseason atmosphere is already prevalent here in the WIAC as we continue to wind down the rest of the regular season. As the Pointers are 13-6 and six overall and 5-3 and three in the conference. They will play two games this week with the matchup against Whitewater on the road Wednesday and then travel to Eau Claire to face the Blue Golds on Saturday. After our final commercial break, we'll be back to talk about the Pointers men's hockey team and do some buy or sell. This is the Sports Hub on SBTV. UW Stevens Point is home. It's a university where professors know your name and get you involved in research. They inspire us to realize big dreams. At UW Stevens Point, sustainability is what we stand for. Our beautiful campus encourages exploration, developing new fields, and problem solving for the real world. It's a great place to launch your career. UW Stevens Point is home. Apply today at uwsp.edu. College has given me the flexibility to pursue my passions and my interests, and I've recreated my identity for myself aside from just being an athlete. My greatest personal discovery has been that I am capable of doing things that I didn't know I was capable of doing. To be able to study what I wanted to and continue to play the sport I love, all of those things came together very nicely in one package in Division Three. Welcome back to the Sports Hub. After starting the season 5-6-1, and one, the UWSP men's hockey team have turned around their luck and are currently riding on a nine-game unbeaten streak. The Pointers have been 7-0-2 in this stretch, which has included five wins over ranked opponents. UWSP has also jumped up to second in the WIAC with four games remaining in the regular season. Guys, and, uh, talk about this. Uh, what key factors have contributed to their uh, recent success? Staying in the game. They're doing a good job of keeping themselves in hockey games. Their last two wins, 6-5 to five on the road against UW Superior, and then 3-2 to two where they scored two goals in the final 111 of their game here at KB Willard Ice Arena. They've done a great job all year. Well, I guess I shouldn't say all year, but lately in their nine-game unbeaten streak, keeping themselves in games, scoring late goals. I know when they played UW River Falls, when they tied them, we were at that game. They were down two to zero. Gave up two non, you know, I'm trying to think uh, of the word, but not familiar goals for they, the. They were power play goals, I believe. One was a shorthanded goal where it was a three on one opportunity against them, and then a power play goal. Yes, yeah, so um, not very characteristic of the pointers to give up, and then scoring late goals, answering back, keeping themselves in that game, got a huge point, especially against a conference team like River Falls, right behind them in conference play right now. So those games where they matter, like Superior and River Falls, keeping themselves in them, getting big wins on the road and at home, and you know not giving them other teams like Superior and River Falls chances to gain a step ahead of them. And you know two games behind Eau Claire, Eau Claire sitting at 8-2-1, uh, we're sitting at 6-2-3, and three, so Eau Claire plays River Falls, two big games after they play um, Northland College. So hopefully we can get a little help from River Falls. We play uh, Northland College after Stout this weekend. So two very teams that are beatable. Um, I think we have a good chance. We can get a one seed. I don't know if it's going to happen. Um, Eau Claire has to lose both of their games. So it's very unlikely. But still, being that two seed helps getting two home games in conference play in the tournament play and Eau Claire who we have beaten the last I should say the last um, six times we played them that I know of um, we are 5 0 one so if Eau Claire and I or if Eau Claire and the pointers are in the final game I'm gonna take the pointers even being a pointer just because we kinda own them when it comes to playing against them you know being 5 0 one we beat them on the road we beat them here it doesn't really matter where we seem to face them we beat them, and I think that's a very good thing for Tyler Kruger to have because 
They just know how to beat the Blue Golds, and hopefully it will come down to that if it does. Yeah, looking at the question you asked, Mike, is what factors have contributed to their success? We are the champions, my friends. It's, it's, they still are. They still are, right? The Pointers won the national championship last year. Only D3 hockey team to go undefeated and do that. Tyler Krieger is still hungry. He still wants his squad to be in it. He still wants his squad to do this again because who doesn't want to win championships? But that said, we always talk about on the show going back to the bases, basics. Excuse me. UW Stevens Point out shooting their opponents by 200 shots roughly this year and penalties. They have 55 less than their opponents. They're doing the things right, especially in this run, this nine game run we're talking about. They've got it back, right? It looked rough at the beginning of, at the, beginning of the year when they were 500 falling out of the rankings. Now they're back up to 13th in the uh, rankings as of today. The rankings came out a couple hours ago. Ranked 13th in the nation. They're right back in it. Now they're right where they wanna mm -hmm. be and Jackson mentioned it. They just gotta keep winning and doing their things, at least not losing. So um, they're happy where they're at. They've obviously cleaned it up heavily, and uh, they're in a good spot as we enter the, the back half of the season. Yeah, and especially since uh, the WIAC does not get an automatic postseason bid to the national tournament, every game on here and out is essentially like an elimination game right. for UWSP. So I think that's a good mentality to keep, especially for Tyler Krieger and the rest of the Pointers program as they are 12-6-3 on the season and are only one game behind UW-Eau Claire in the standings, as well as Alex mentioned, ranked 13th in the nation. They will be on the road for two games this weekend against UW Stout and Menominee. Now for the last part of the show, we'll do some buy or sell. First one, the 2020 season of the XFL will be more successful than the 2001 version. I like this question. Um, I was too. Uh, yes, it will be. I mean, obviously it folded after uh, a year. I, I'll take it. I think so. They, they've, they've taken their time. They announced this in 2017 that it would be making a comeback in 2020 and here we are it's time for Vince McMahon to see what he's made of um, so yeah they've taken the right amount of time here um, and I think I think it will be much more successful than the 2001 version although I don't know how invested I will be personally I am gonna buy this I think it's gonna be good for the fans just because you know the NFL kind of struggles <clears throat> struggles with keeping their fans happy there's a lot of conflict that goes on with Roger Goodell and all the things that have happened this year I think the XFL you know, brings that like different type of energy to their organization. I think it's going to be good for the people because the people are just going to get into it. And that's, you know, the biggest thing is the reason things struggle is because there's not enough fans, there's not enough energy around it. And I think the XFL is going to have that. And like you said, they've taken their time to make sure they're going to do it right. Then, you know, 19 years ago when it was in 2001. So it'll, it'll be interesting, but I think I'm, I'm in on it. This is, once again, the XFL. I'll buy it. I like football, and I'm, I'm really looking forward to watching some more football here as the NFL season is now in the books. Next one. Michigan State is still the team to beat in the Big Ten Conference. When you've got a guy like Cassius Winston, I think it's hard to argue against that. I'm going to buy this. Um, I think this is only going to make um, Saturday's loss, that is, make Tom Izzo and company even more dangerous. I'm going to buy this. I'm going to buy it. Plain and simple, I think he's going to play with a chip on the shoulder for the rest of the year. Um, one of the bigger reasons, harder reasons for him to deal with is his brother, and I think he makes a big run, and I think that's uh, something he's going to use, not to his advantage, but use to play for, is his brother, and you know probably make a deep run in the uh, tournament. I'll buy it, but at the same time, I'm going to say that they do have a kryptonite now that the Badgers got that big win over, again, yeah. over them on Saturday. So they are beatable, but they are still the team in the Big Ten that's number one. Final one. Uh, some Hall of Fame news. Leroy Butler will be in the Pro Football Hall of Fame next year. I'll let you start. Um, that's a hard one. It's hard to say because there's a lot of choices for the NFL to pick from. And I think that, I, honestly, I'm just going to sell it because it's just too hard for me to commit to. Mike? Yeah, I'm going to sell it. It's going to be too difficult of a class next year to really pick out everybody from the list. I'm also going to sell it, but stop doing nonsense. Put the guy in. He's better than guys you put in this year. He created the Lambeau League, for God's sakes. Let's get him in. Yeah. <laughs> and that was a great again. throw. He made it again, yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, <laughs> that's all There's the time we have on, on today's show. I'd like to thank Alex and Jackson for being here on the show. And a big thank you to our technical staff and all the hard work to make this show possible. 
Check out our Facebook page at SBTV UWSB Television. Follow us on Instagram at SBTV underscore UWSP. And check out our Twitter pages as well. Lastly, don't forget to check out the UWSB Athletics page for all things Pointer Sports. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time on the Sports Hub.